Hey, good morning. This is Dan with Puts Ponds and Gardens. You're watching our YouTube channel, Puts Ponds. I got a text this morning from Brian over at the Reptarium. We're going to head over there because Brian had seen a couple drips from one of the features. We don't want to have any drips on an interior water feature at all. Can you imagine waking up one morning and finding out that there's hundreds of gallons of water on the floor? Can't have that. So a drip becomes a pond. We don't want that. So come on along with us and we're going to head over to the Reptarium. I am literally freaking out right now. I mean, I don't know what to do. This is the one pond that there's not a lot of easy fix on it. And uh, what happens, my friend Dan came over because we we're getting a little bit of splash. So we wanted to adjust the falls a little bit. And when he adjusted the falls, I'm not sure why, but for some reason now we have a massive leak. Um, I, I honestly don't even know what to say. I mean, this is not an easy fix. This like oh we just have to tighten some valves this is literally like we don't know where the water is coming from we have no idea how to fix it this is one self-contained unit so there's not like components that like oh you just got to seam something it's leaking from underneath no way for us to know where it's leaking from how to fix it All right, so over here at the Reptarium, we're at the Turtle Pond, and what had happened is we adjusted the, the, the valves down here. It ended up, too much water was coming out. It was coming up and going behind, like Brian said, and what that did is it must have broken a seal back there. So long and short, what we did is right behind here, we ended up siliconing. Brian probably added some other um, waterproofing back there, like maybe some Flex Seal or something too. And that's okay. Um, Flex Seal doesn't really last from what we found. And um, the next thing I did is down in here, I ended up adjusting the valves to decrease this flow. So the splash is minimalized, very little. The biggest thing is now we have more filtration over here. If the valves were originally installed correctly, then we would have never had this problem. We would be able to adjust the flow on here and the flow on here, isolate them independently. And it was, uh, if it wasn't gonna happen when I was here, it was gonna happen at some point in time. And just thankfully we got it taken care of before anything major happened. Like come in in the morning and find out this entire enclosure was empty. We've had water all over the floor here. Well, while we're here at the Reptarium, let's just look, look and see what has been going on. They've been spending a lot of time detailing this out, you know, covering everything. Where the seams are, right here. See this rock face here to here? There's a seam that runs all along down here. And I think they did an excellent job camouflaging that. This looks really nice. Nice little shelf right here. Uh, but the enclosures are really coming together. There's no animal in this one yet. The detail on this, what I like to see, hopefully this shows up, is 
going down this rock face they put an epoxy on here so it gives it a little bit of a shine to it so it makes it look like the, the rock wall is weeping water coming down nice little effect moss not real moss it's it's a painted on with some dust on top of it looks great and a lot of these the reptiles are not in yet but let's go take a look at a couple of the other ones now here's here's one there's a snake all curled up looks like he's loving it so far heat lamps are in there's one sitting right there got another snake down in here here's the alligator pond with waterfall and that water's clearing up really well there's one all by itself So here's the birthday room. Look at that mural. Check that out. Jay, who I met during this experience, took all these photographs and he mashed them all together. And then he had a, a graphics guy put this on a print and they came in and installed it as a surprise for Brian. This would be a really nice room for a birthday party for kids. All the detail on the walls. Now these are some of the details that I know will be addressed, like little spots like this, all the staples to get them onto the wall. Here's, here's some good example of some seams. Now all that'll be taken care of. But you know what, everything takes time. Brian's wife, Lori, is a perfectionist at this and she wants to make sure everything is taken care of. So this will be a snake mas massage room. Imagine that. No, not what I thought. I thought you bring your snake in here, put him down on the table, and someone would come in and massage your snake. Not the case. A little naive. You actually lay down on this table, and they have snakes inside these enclosures. You get to pick which one. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like fun to me. It sounds more like torture. You'd have to have straps on this bed to hold me down to get a snake to go over me. <laughs> Not happen. But I guess a lot of people like it. So this will be the area here. It's still not built out yet. But this is going to be where there's going to be two seats. And you can dip your feet into the water. It's about two feet of water. And there's little fish in there that will eat the dead skin right off of your, your feet and your, your legs that are in the water. Again, another perk, something that could be cool for some people, got to check it out for yourself. This area here, another enclosure, some more smaller tanks here. This area up in front will be a gift shop. I'm sure they'll have um, a counter here for checking out. But I just wanted to show you a little bit of the reptarium and what it looks like now versus when we were here during all the chaos and moving these big heavy tanks in place and getting them all plumbed up yes we've had um, like like this um, anaconda tank here this one oh look the anaconda is inside now that's a big boy imagine having that baby wrapped around you if you remember I was crawling underneath here and I had to adjust some of the, the plumbing that was underneath there. The alligator tank in the back, I had to adjust the plumbing in the back of that. I had to switch up the couplers or the uh, gaskets that were on the back of the biological filter there and reverse them so the rubber was on the inside and the plastic was on the outside. And having very limited space didn't make it easy, but you know what? In the long run, no drips on the floor. Remember, drips on the floor, one drip will turn into a pond. So mark your calendars, March 13th, and that's their grand opening. Book a party and kind of check it out. See what you think. Existing reptarium over here, newly expanded. I love how they brought everything together to make it look seamless. This is a great teaching environment because all of the 
the handlers that are here, you can ask them any question about any of their their animals that are here. They will educate you. Things that you didn't know. Maybe some things that you didn't want to know. This is a great teaching environment for not only the young, but the older people as well. Things that you may have always wondered. That's about it for this video. The Reptarium expansion is well underway. It's not open yet. March 13th, mark your calendars. If you have any comments, leave them below. I'm Dan with Puts Ponds, and this is our YouTube channel, Puts Ponds.